on to the next story, which is this one right here about hair. Not a problem that I have, uh, but specifically speaking, apparently a high school in Osaka um, ha had a rule, and this is something, It's this is not common. Uh, first thing I, I definitely want to say right away is that uh, it's not common for schools to have rules about uh, hair, uh, color, and whatnot, and when they do, um, it's most often private schools and so on. However, there is this uh, public school in um, Osaka Prefecture, Kaifukang Prefectural High School in uh, Habikino, uh, Osaka Prefecture. They did have a school rule that all the kids uh, are supposed to have black hair. And the thinking behind this rule is, well, that anyone who doesn't have brown hair, you know, it, it is kind of popular and trendy, particularly for young adults uh, who are sort of out in the world and free for the first time in their early 20s. It's kind of popular for Japanese to get a mild a mild peroxide that will just make their hair slightly brown they'll just give it a bit of a tint or, or whatever of color and then you know people like that it's it, it actually makes them look like they uh you know um could be a bit sun bleached or it could be a little bit uh, you could have a little bit of exotic heritage or whatever and it's kind of popular and trendy to do that but of course schools not wanting to um you know foster the idea of their students you know doing anything in the direction of uh, appealing of how different they are or trying to trying to get one up the philosophy is actually egalitarian it's this idea that you don't want people to make themselves look more fashionable or attractive by allowing them to do things like wear jewelry or dye their hair or do stuff like that so they have these rules in a way the the rule that everyone has to have black hair is probably founded from the mentality that you're not supposed to dye your hair which is the normal rule in high schools in new zealand and other countries but in japan um, because they could probably couldn't even conceive of normal people not having black hair when they made the rule. Um, yeah, they have a rule that hair has to be black. And apparently this goes to the point that even for people, Japanese people, whose hair is naturally um, brown or a different color, including an extreme case like uh, more than a decade ago when an exchange student, a foreign, an actual blonde haired exchange student was forced to um, dye their hair. And for, forgetting about how people can actually be sensitive to the dyes that are used for hair dye and suffer all sorts of scalp problems and skin problems and whatnot. Uh, a, 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 in any case, a girl at a high school who, uh, who, whose hair was naturally brown was told that she had to uh, dye her hair black. And apparently, you know, she struggled with it. Uh, she she reacted uh, to the um, to the dye, and in the end of the day, she uh, now what was the she stopped attending classes basically from the stress of being forced to dye her hair artificially to be to be black, and uh, that caused her to drop out of high school. And uh, years after, she uh, filed a lawsuit basically for the. Um, against the prefecture because you know, there's a prefectural school for the suffering uh, caused basically by uh, being forced to dye her hair black and it leading to her dropping out of school. Um, so the Osaka District Court uh, did grant her compensation for the mental suffering and stress that she followed. However, they also said that um, the rule itself that the school had uh, forcing students to dye their hair black was reasonable. So they actually said that it's constitutional for schools to force their kids to dye their hair artificially um, to be black to make them look uh, like the expected image of what Japanese people look like. Um, however, at the same time, they acknowledged that she, um, uh, her being forced to quit the school uh, and the suffering that she suffered led to her getting a $21,000 payout in compensation, which I suppose when you think about the amount of impact that dropping out of high school early could have um, on your life, uh, $21,000 uh, really probably wouldn't quite cover that. Japan is a country where you don't get a lot of money from litigation. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, if this had happened in America and she'd like dropped a cup, a cup of hot coffee on top of all of that, you know, you could imagine that the award would have been a lot bigger. So in a way, it's good that she got compensated uh, at the same time. The fact that it asserted a, a rule which basically is racist. I mean, straight up, it, it, it's actually a regulation against being not only not Japanese, but the other thing is there are particularly young kids naturally often quite have quite light brown hair in Japan and sometimes, and they're not necessarily half. Um, the girl in this case, uh, I don't think it says if she if she was half or if she had an international parent. In the end of the day, she just had naturally brown hair. Um, and, and the thing is, Japanese have that. So, um, yeah, you know, in the end of the day, the uh, kind of being hazed for the natural color of your hair. I mean, again, it doesn't happen often, but this happened at the school. I mean, 
I think if that happened, <laughs> I couldn't imagine it happening in Tokyo, honestly. Uh, and if it did, uh, in, in, where I am, uh, I, I would react extremely adversely. Um, I don't know. I, I still think this should, this should be appealed. It's just a ridiculous case. But uh, yes, that, that is a thing that happens still this week. So it's still the problem. And the fact that it happened in a public high school, you know, uh, is just ridiculous. So that's a thing that happened.